Welcome to Teaching and Copyright Part 2. This is Jennifer Zerke, Copyright Specialist here at SFU. This video will explain the Fair Dealing and Educational Institution exceptions in the Copyright Act, which allow instructors to use copyright protected works in certain ways in the classroom. This video assumes you have a basic knowledge of copyright. If you need a refresher, view the Copyright Basics video. Visit the website copyright.sfu.ca for more information and resources, or contact the SFU Copyright Office at copy at sfu.ca with any questions. The information in this video pertains specifically to the Simon Fraser University community. This information is provided as a professional and not a legal opinion. The contents of this video should not be relied on as legal advice. If you can't find materials that are licensed for your use or in the public domain, like we described in Teaching and Copyright Part 1, there are some exceptions built into the Copyright Act that allow you to use copyright-protected works without permission in certain ways and in certain situations. The Act allows for certain personal uses, like PVRing TV shows, making a backup copy of a work that you own, or copying for other private purposes. At work here at SFU, you may be able to use the Fair Dealing and Educational Institution exceptions. Fair dealing is the Copyright Act's term for legal infringement. As you can see, there are specific purposes for which you are allowed to use copyright protected works. Research, private study, education, parody, satire, criticism, review, and news reporting. However, those terms can be interpreted very broadly. So the Supreme Court of Canada has created six criteria to consider when determining whether a particular use qualifies as fair dealing. These involve looking at things like how widely the work will be distributed, how much of the work you are copying, and whether your use will impact the market for the work. These criteria are each considered on a scale of more fair to less fair, and a decision is made on balance of all of those answers. You can see that it would be difficult and time-consuming to make these judgments every time you want to copy something. This is not something you are expected to do. SFU, along with many other universities in Canada, has set out parameters and safe harbour limits for faculty and staff to make it a bit easier to know what you can and can't do. The SFU Fair Dealing Policy, R30.04a, called Application of Fair Dealing under Policy R30.04, sets out limits that apply to copying works for use in your courses under the eight Fair Dealing Purposes. The policy further sets out that the amount of the work copied must be a short excerpt, more on that in a moment, and that the short excerpt can only be distributed to students registered in a course in the following ways. As a class handout, which includes emailing it directly to students, as a posting to a learning management system such as Canvas that is restricted to students in that specific course, or as part of a course pack. So the reproduction has to be for a specific class group, not for wider distribution. You can't post something on a public website, for example, even if it's only intended for one group of students. This infographic, which is available on the copyright website, lays out for you the limits on copying and using third-party materials for your courses, both under SFU's Fair Dealing Policy and under the Educational Institution Exceptions in the Copyright Act which are actions specified in the Act that users at educational institutions can do that others can't, and they typically go beyond the limits of fair dealing. In the left column are the safe harbour limits for working under fair dealing at SFU. You can see that the maximum you can copy without permission is typically 10% of the work or one chapter, article, or track, depending on the medium. You would use the option that works best for you. So, if one chapter is more than 10%, you can still copy it. Or if two chapters together make up only 8%, you can copy both chapters. These limits are applied per course, so you can't copy one chapter one week and another chapter the following week, but if you're teaching two courses, you can copy one chapter for one course and another chapter of the same book for the other course. Note that if you download an individual song, or have a standalone artwork like a single photograph and wish to copy those, you are dealing with 100% of that work and would need permission to do so. 
but if you download an album, you can copy one whole song from it. And if you have a compilation of artworks, such as a coffee table book or a website gallery, you can copy one whole image from the compilation. In the right column are the educational exceptions. For example, you can copy an entire work 100% for display in the classroom or in an exam, therefore in a format the students can't take with them. You can now show an entire film in class without a public performance license, and you can communicate an entire work found on the internet in any medium to your students as long as you aren't breaking a digital lock, such as a block on copying or downloading, and there isn't a clear statement on the work or on the website prohibiting its use. Finally, you will see that if you want to do something that goes beyond the limits in either column, you should contact the Copyright Office. Remember that our fair dealing limits are a safe harbour, and the law may permit use of a larger portion of a work, but the Copyright Office would determine this in consultation with you. In some cases, you will be required to request permission from the copyright holder, which the Copyright Office can also assist with. When a classroom lesson is delivered online in a fixed format that can be viewed at the student's leisure, such as a video posted in Canvas, and if the lesson contains copyright protected material that exceeds the fair dealing allowance, then that lesson must be destroyed 30 days after the students have received their final grades. The Copyright Act states that the educational institution must destroy any fixation of the lesson, which we take to mean that you cannot simply cut off access to that material or hide it, but that the files must be deleted completely. An example of this would be a filming of a class lecture where a video was shown. A video can be shown in the class, but if this video is captured in the film of the lecture and the film is posted in Canvas for students to watch, then it contains a copy of that video which was shown to students. You can't copy an entire video, therefore the film contains copyright infringing work. So it must be destroyed 30 days after students have received their final grades, and any copies the students may have made must also be destroyed. We don't expect you to be the police, and it would be impossible to ensure that each student deletes these files but you are required to perform due diligence consisting of making this required statement clearly visible along with every lesson that contains copyright protected material exceeding the fair dealing limits and that is shared online, whether posted to Canvas or emailed directly to students. Thank you for watching Teaching and Copyright Part 2. For a related discussion about finding teaching materials with open licenses or which are free from copyright, please watch Teaching and Copyright Part 1. If you have any questions about the content of this workshop or about any copyright issues, contact the Copyright Office at copy at sfu.ca or visit the copyright website for more information.